This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Okay, from the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. Oh, and I'm Mark. Uh, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Get My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Video games on your phone. Yes. <laughs> Mark and I are addicted to playing The Simpsons Tapped Out right now. Indeed. And so I thought maybe we should talk about mobile gaming on phones and tablet devices. Okay. Do you know, do you remember the first game you played on a phone by any chance? I'm not even sure when we got our first phones. Well, I, I had a uh, I had um, the StarTac. Yeah. I remember having this, a StarTac phone. So in um, 1999, uh, that's when you know mobile phones were first coming out as like the flip phone right. kind of thing, yeah. with actual screens and everything. And at that point, there were some games available, but they were mostly preloaded. Oh, it was, it was all hard coded into the phone. Hard coded into the phone yeah. <laughs> through the phone, or you could get them through the phone operator sometimes. Yeah. And the first one that really took off was Snake. Yes. Do you, do you remember Snake? It was yes. kind of like a little line that went around the screen. It was sort of based off of Blockade, which was an arcade game. Yeah, so the idea was this this snake would go around the screen and you do, couldn't have it run into itself. And it kept getting longer, longer, and, longer. and longer and longer. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Ooh, fun! And it was on this incredibly small, small postage stamp screen. And they were all black and white screens. Of course. And you had to use the buttons on your phone right. to control the game. Yeah. <laughs> so a year later, which is, you know, what, you know, like ten years in regular time, yeah. one year in, in development time, yeah. you started getting things like uh, the Tamagotchi like games on phones. Mm -hmm. Um Tamagotchis, in case you didn't know, were these little mostly keychain sized games that had little pets on them. Right. That you kept alive by doing things. There was a popular one called Alien Fish Exchange, which basically you like bred fish on your phone. Yeah. And, you know, they were still little black and white fish. You tried to keep them alive. You had to feed them on a regular basis so they die. And then there were some games that, like, you fed your Tamagotchi animals by taking pictures of the food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's bizarre. Um, 2002 rolls around and we start seeing Java on phones. Right. Ooh. Which... So, actual, actual games. We're getting, you know, it's, it's, it's getting more complex. Yes. So there was a um, uh, company called Jam Dad. I, yeah. Does that sound familiar to you? I, I don't they remember the name. They were later bought out by a company you would recognize, but they had a very popular bowling game on the mm -hmm. phone. Things like that. They're still pretty simple because, really, at this point, we're just now getting into colored screens. So yes. there wasn't a lot you can do. Right. When we do get colored screens, one of the first games I remember playing on mobile shows up, which is Bejeweled. Do you remember Bejeweled? <laughs> oh, I absolutely remember Bejeweled. I think I still play that sometimes. <laughs> and it's on every platform, and it's still out there yes. very active. Uh-huh. And, and, and there are so many games today that are essentially Bejeweled with a different skin, skin on it. Skin on it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a classic. <laughs> um, in Japan, where the gaming really takes off, 3D games are starting to show up around 2002. Uh, 2004, EA Mobile gets into the game. EA is the is the company that does our Simpsons game. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And they're a behemoth in the industry. Now, yes. Yeah. And at this point, a couple years after that, um, you start seeing some things happening like uh, celebrities endorsing games. Uh. <laughs> Paris Hilton gets a game. Diamond Quest. Which is just a bejeweled clone. Basically, yes. <laughs> but really, the game market didn't take off until about 2000 or 2008, 7 or 2008, when the iPhone arrived. And that is such a watershed moment, because before then, the phone companies were like, okay, we'll contract with whomever to make a phone for us. And their main purpose was... To talk on the phone, yes. you know, maybe beginning of texting, but that they'd rather you have a pager for that. Yeah, you know, and, and and they didn't want to do any updates for that. They wanted you to use it until it was time for the next contract. Then they'd give you a phone that was virtually identical to that. <laughs> <laughs> Flip phones, you know, they were in no hurry to change the the market, and it was all button based. It was virtually nothing was touch screen, mm -hmm. and. Apple comes out and basically creates this 
a, a paradigm change in the industry, which is why every phone is like this soap bar type design. <laughs> with the <laughs> touch screen. With the touch screen, and it's just basically this rectangle. And an app store. Most importantly. And, and the app store wasn't there at the very beginning. No. But once the app store kicked in, that absolutely changed the industry. And it, it also changed software development because yes. suddenly there was a way you didn't have to write something for Windows and sell it for $60. You could write this little game and suddenly you could sell it for $1.99 and make more money. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought we would talk about some of the games we played on our touchscreen phones mm -hmm. after they started becoming popular. And of yeah. course, probably the biggest one in terms of people knowing it is Angry Birds. Yeah, yeah. And this is a game that has had so many variations. This com this, this company has been betting the farm on this. And that's a, that's another factor here is that you as a as a software company, you're only as good as the last game you put out in the last 2 weeks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's they have a very for the most part a very short shelf life. Angry Birds because of all the variants they've put out, have extended it. But even now, people are like, people aren't really playing Angry Birds. No, people are playing Angry Birds, but we did just see the Angry Birds movie. Yeah, about three years too late. Yeah. <laughs> now, another game that's sort of perennial is Tetris. And Tetris goes all the way back to the Game Boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's on every platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's a very simple game uh, uh, designed by this Russian developer mm -hmm. who made huge amounts of money off of this thing. Um, and, and there is a pattern to some of the games that they did move from other platforms in. Right. Like Minesweeper. I never played Minesweeper on my phone. I was not a big fan of Minesweeper after it left wind after I left Windows. Right, right. Eh. But the number of hours of productivity that have been lost to Minesweeper <laughs> are, are incalculable. Um, <laughs> did you ever play Fruit Ninja? I played it a little bit. It was fun, but it wasn't to me one of the addictive games, although a lot of people thought it was. How now, about now, now, I was going to say about Fruit Ninja, games like that... If you go to one of the places that are arcades now that are doing modern games, mm -hmm. you'll see these huge cabinets that are just massive Fruit Ninja games. That are It's the exact same game, the exact same mechanics. Instead of a little screen like this, it's a screen like this. And you're going... Yeah. <laughs> which I'm like, why? I can play it on my phone for free. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cut the Rope. Yes. Do you remember that one? Yes. It was okay. Yeah. Did you ever play Doom on your phone? It's really hard to play first-person shooters on the phone. Kids can do it. That's what I thought, <laughs> I, I, it's, it, it's really hard because you only have so much real estate, and then it's really hard to control it. Yes. Uh, Doodle Jump. Do you remember that one? I, to me, it was sort of like Frogger. Mm -hmm. um, instead of jumping across the street, you're jumping like from cloud to cloud. or Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plants versus Zombies. Nah, I played that a lot. Yeah. But again, died very quickly. And... They did what many developers have done when they did a when they did a sequel to it. They basically turned on the in-game or in-app uh, purchases, and they made it in such a way that you pretty much had to make the in-app purchases to really play the second version of the game. Yeah. After yeah. after you had been trained to just you know power your way through, yeah, you could do in-app purchases, but you didn't have to. Suddenly you did, yeah. and that's what killed it. Um, Flappy Bird. Yeah. <laughs> that was a stupid game, and, and yet it was so popular. And that was an example of a game that lasted such an incredibly short amount of time on the market. But made a huge amount of money. Yeah. And uh, the big, huge waste of time, Candy Crush. <laughs> and all, I'm going to include all of its uh, yeah. other clones there from uh, the company that did it. Yeah, and that's the first time you saw... At least I remember seeing television ads. Mm -hmm. It was like, "What is this? This is for this is for a mobile game? game yeah. Ads for a mobile game? Yeah." And and I don't know. I, I think this might be the first time I actually saw a tie-in from your mobile game to like Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you know, so you know, your results are reported and stuff. Very kind of integrated, weird, getting you to spend money kind of thing to right. do. Right. And these it's, free games yeah. made billions of dollars yeah. in in-app purchases. Yeah. Then there was another, a whole other series of games that you would play with your friends via your phones. Things like Words with Friends, mm -hmm. Draw Something, um, Clash of Clans, yeah. which I never played but is very big. And people, when they see me playing The Simpsons, often say, oh, are you playing Clash of Clans? <laughs> and uh, so, 
you know, there's there are some social aspects that you can use with your phone games as well. Right, and draw something was and words with friends, really both, were games in which it wasn't just for kids anymore. Yes. Kids could play it. But it, but adults could play it and I go, you know, I'm kind of playing this goofy little, you know goofy game. Fruit yeah. game. Uh-huh. Uh but it was a game draw something in, in particular was huge for like two weeks and then fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. And of course now you have Pokemon Go. Yes. <laughs> which has become this enormous phenomenon that also has jump started this augmented reality concept that mm-hmm. most people are like, what do I need this for? They found the killer app <laughs> yes. for augmented reality. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and certainly it's making people go outside and right. do things mm-hmm. and so run, run into cars. We'll and... <laughs> have to see what the next generation of mobile gaming is like. Right. Who knows? <laughs> Meanwhile, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.